Mr. Joe Bonamassa, how are you doing today? Doing great, man. Um, great studio, by the way. Love well, it. it's it's my virtual studio. <laughs> it's a virtual studio. I see. I was going to say, you still recording analog, and I see some focus right. I see some old uh, Yuri stuff, and a, a solid state logic. That's old school, man. You hey, know, twist the knots. Light. Hit exactly. The, you know, hit record on the tape machine and see what you got. Hey, man, there's nothing like analog. <laughs> we were actually just down at Fame and in, in Muscle Shoals recording an album. And uh, that that vibe is still there, even though it's digital now. But the vibe is there. Every um, time I get a studio tour of like one of those iconic, you know, uh, studios, and I, I, I use the Abbey Road uh, reference. It's like, you know, Abbey Road was like I was getting the whole tour and, you know, they, they will rent you the gear. They'll rent you the, the, the Lennon mic and they'll rent you the, the piano from Hey Jude. And the EMI console from Dark Dark Side of the Moon. We finally got to the console, which was in the hallway, and um, and a very nice fellow was giving me the tour. And but clearly it was a sales pitch. And uh, and I love Abbey Road. I work there all the time. Um, and at this point, I'm like, okay, we, I'm, I'm my ADDs. We're 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 peak. And uh, I look at the console. I go, oh my god, that thing can do anything. And he's like, yeah. And he goes, probably thinks I'm going to rent it for our session. I said, the only thing it can't do is write those fucking songs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Same thing with fame. You're like, right. you're like, oh, that's great. You know, where's Aretha? Where's yeah, exactly. Poppers? You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, wait, you know, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, it, you yeah. got it. It's the studio is is the is the is just the tool. It's not the it's not the it's not the pen and paper. It's not the creativity. It's that's it. It's, it, it, well, I, let me let me rephrase it. It is, it is the creativity, but you got to have the the impetus of the idea, right? And there's just something sexy about looking at the Neve console. <laughs> just something about that. I actually, I we used to also do Sound City. They had the same thing, the Neve in that le legendary you know place. And it's crazy. It's great that those places are still around, which is yeah. Awesome. Sound City is still a studio. Everybody thinks it it got shut down now, but she's still running it. And and uh, you know. The great thing about Neves is they're they're like old cars, you know, like one day it's perfect. The next day you're banging on the, 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 the channels to get them to work. And that's why mixes were so different back 50 years ago is because it was a performance, you know, and every time you'd run that music through the those channels, it would sound slightly different as, as things would heat up and, you know, you know, sound fresher and then they sound warmer or duller. You know, it's like. It, it it was it was it's not like it is today where you can mix everything in a box and it's like the same you know all the automations there and you know but yeah I don't it's my soapbox <laughs> you are it's nice and shiny um so you you are a very busy guy <laughs> i'm going through all the stuff prepping for the you know our interview and i'm like man it's there's so much going on so you have number one charting blues deluxe two album which and you've been touring uh, doing i'm assuming doing some of that but you have also have a tour come launching a summer tour july 17th um yeah. you've got live at the hollywood ball which hasn't been released yet but you have a single coming out mm -hmm. um so yeah you know so when you're doing i guess you just i know you're just in europe um what's your touring schedule like is it just non-stop or do you take breaks or how do you approach that well we did 10 weeks this year so far um we did five and a half and three and five and a half in the u.s three and a half in europe um but you know the month of may we had two shows we had uh, new orleans jazz and heritage festival last week and then uh, this up i don't know I'm not sure when this airs but this upcoming week we're opening up for the rolling stones in seattle and awesome. then uh next next month we have uh we're going back to brazil for the first time in a decade um we have a couple of couple of gigs in the uk and then you know, July begins the Blues Deluxe Volume 2, uh, the Blues Deluxe Tour with the big band, 12 piece. But we also have like a weekend run of shows kind of crammed in there. And, um, you know, we're always working, you know, for if, I, if I'm home and, and, and not touring, we're always working in a some capacity, you know, whether we're recording, I'm producing records. Um, I like to be busy this year is I'll be at probably one of the busiest years in the last decade. And, um, I always tell people be careful what you wish for, because all that work that you did to try to break through and, and gain some success pales in comparison to what you actually find. 
<laughs> exactly. And you handle a lot of your business. You actually handle personally, right? That That's my understanding anyways. What they call in, on CNBC a vertical integration. <laughs> meaning that it's, there's there's it it's not horizontal it's ver- totally vertical meaning that we do our own merch our own concert promotions awesome we, we are our own record company uh we are our own uh, pr and promotions and and social media it, it all there's nothing outsourced it's all under one roof yeah that's awesome i mean being able to have that kind of control many artists would, would just dream about that right well every artist has the right to do that they're not they're they're not victims. They're just they're they, they it's they have to be willing to bet on themselves. Um, you got to look yourself in the mirror. It's like if I'm not willing to bet on myself, how am I going to get someone else to bet on me? Exactly. So let's start there. Um, it is it is easy to fall in the trap of things are just sorted out for you, but that comes at a price. Price is percentage off the top line, not not the not not after expense. Top yeah. line. It's a percentage of, you know, management company, um, you know, an agent, you know, promoter um, and all of that, you know, and and it's not rocket science. It just takes it just takes a the willing to willingness to bet on yourself and the willingness to reinvest once you start earning enough to reinvest. Right. And and it's not and, and it's not millions of dollars. You could you could you could move the decimal point, you know two two or three positions to the left you know before you know it, it's like if you made a thousand dollars you're like okay great i made a thousand dollars it's like it's like what what are we going to do now how do we reinvest that to make to make it where we could we can make two thousand dollars or 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 double our audience or invest in our merchandise or our, our our promotions our marketing marketing is a huge thing you know um you know especially now in a, such a cluttered industry um it, it's like if a tree falls in the woods does it play an e chord the answer is nobody <laughs> gives a shit um unless unless you give them a reason to you know and, and let them know that the tree fell and is playing an e chord yeah that's the thing because there's so much noise with with all the streaming platforms and and all that it's like how do you break through for any artist even even big artists there's there's so much room at the top and i mean fortunately you've been the number one blues um artist and now actually moving into rock with with um, your other super group um, with black country communion. Well, we've had I that for say. 15 years. We've done right. black country for 15 years. And I, I mean, I've done a lot of different side projects. I mean, that, that, that have all been great. You know um, my work with the black country communion, I'm very proud of, and the new album's great. It's the fifth album. Sounds killer. Be- yeah. And by the way, it's the best one we've done. And I, I I'm so, the media training in me is supposed to say that. But I'm telling you, honestly, <laughs> I didn't think it was going to be the best one when we walked into the studio. Next thing you know, I'm like, on, you know, this thing is really the strongest material and the best playing that this band collectively has done. Um, you know, the work I did with Beth Hart in the last, you know, like a decade right. ago was was, you know, people still talk about, you know, us reuniting and doing something. And I'm like, well, you know it's everything's on the table it's just is there time and an appetite for it so you know i mean th- that that really is more you know and then what i do with the rock candy funk party the instrumental stuff and all the collaborations that we're doing it's just it's it's part of a general pile and catalog um that that is really designed to 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 just you know feed the machine and keep it going how do you how do you make the decision on which projects? I'm sure you're getting approached all the time. Then you have your pet projects as well. How do you make a decision on which one to to go with at the time? Whatever feels right. You got to go with your gut. If you're inspired, there's nothing better than being inspired. Um, if you sit there and and you you know you know furrow your brow and think and think and think and then go, you know what I think I should do? I should reach out to so and so because if that that's going to go viral. That's the wrong way to approach it. If it's natural and it's and it it has a meaning to it, then it then it's going to connect with the audience. If it's if it's you know if it's if it's internet dating, you don't want that. You know, it's exactly. like well, let me you you have so many followers and I have so many followers and right. now let's 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 join forces and <laughs> I'm not I have no appetite for that kind of nonsense because I I I don't feel it, it is an organic experience. You know, it, it's, 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 again, it's, it's like Bumble and I don't, I don't, I've never done internet dating, but, it, but, but from the experiences that I've heard my other friends have, 
it's like it's like it's like swipe left, swipe right. You don't want any of that nonsense. You want to want it to be organic and mean something. If it right. means authentic, authenticity you, is the thing, right? You have to be the audience. It starts with you to quote quote Rick Rubin on this, and he's so right about so many things. You Absolutely. have to be the audience. It's like if you're the audience for that, then you're the audience of one. But chances are there's going to be more people that that want to hear it than just you. But if you believe it. I'm I'm willing to die in that mountain. If I'm the only person that buys the record and I and I'm, I'm proud of it, I'm willing to die in that mountain every yeah. time. Yeah, I think authenticity. That's the thing because people pick up on that, especially the blues audience in particular. They're really dialed in on that. If they if they smell somebody just trying to kind of ride the blues train and and try to take advantage of that, I think they, they catch. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> well, I think you kind of are the train of th these days. <laughs> but... it, it, it's it again. It's like you see a lot of artists going, quote, country, because the narrative is they have a loyal audience. Well, right. they have a loyal the, the the country artists that that have a loyal audience have been country artists since the down since since, you know, the their first time that they sang Yeehaw or, or <laughs> you know, whatever, or, or the right. first time they, they heard Merle Haggard. I want to I don't want to, you know, sound trite. But, you know, the first time they're like, oh, that's the music that I love. You know what yeah. I mean? They're that's, born that's, into that. Right. That's that's what you know, that's the whole this is why I do what I do. The the reality is sorry, I have a I have a large B basically, whatever. Um <laughs> and you know, the you you can't just kind of like, oh, blues is hip. Look at Gary Clark Jr. Now I want to be blues. You can't just you can't just gotta stick in the lane and stick the landing. Nothing great and nothing successful is easy. There's no easy way to get the, to, 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 to do this. There's no, you're not going to trick them into liking you. You're, you're not going to, there's nothing that you can do that is prefabricated with committee thinking in a, in a, in a boardroom at a record company. That's going to, that's going to create a loyal fan base. You have to be that person. You have to be as advertised. I am that person that, that, that dresses up in the suit, sunglasses and plays blues rock. It's the only, the only thing I know how to do. Yeah. Well, and, and also, too, people have sort of grew up with you in a way because you started so young. So they know it's authentic. They know you've been there and been doing it for years. Um, let's talk about the uh, Live at the Hollywood Bowl. So that's a 40 piece orchestra. Mm -hmm. I heard the uh, the single last night, which is freaking amazing. I love the arrangement style. Um, tell me about how that came about. And I, I was actually your first time performing at the Hollywood Bowl. Is that, is that yeah. correct? Well, the the he, here's the thing is we had the we had some orchestrations ready for we were supposed to do a show with the Colorado Symphony Orchestra um, mm -hmm. at Red Rocks in, in August yep. of 2020. What was going on in 2020? Right, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. But I I never lost sight of that I wanted to do the orchestra show. But in 2022, we did another DVD at Red Rocks called The Tales of Time, which was um, our time clocks record in its entirety with the huge screens and all the crap. So I didn't want to go back to the well and do another DVD from Red Rocks. And he was like, it was like, you know, because then people would be like, was he only play Red Rocks, which is a great <laughs> venue, by the way. But yeah, but we've done that's now. an amazing, that's it, an amazing. It, it, we've, we've already done two DVDs there. Um, opportunity came up to do the Hollywood Bowl with the with the you know david campbell and the la phil and you're like now now's your time you know what i mean that's that's an orchestra room the, the band shell it's designed it's for it. yeah it's amazing and and you know the fact that you know i'm talking to you literally you know two and a half miles as the crow flies from the hollywood bowl you know and i and i can see the lights from my house when they have shows there really brings it home considering that you know 25 years ago when i showed up the, at, at, at the mint on pico and in, in crescent heights <laughs> that nobody came. Right. exactly you know, and then, and then we, here we are the, the hollywood bowl is packed i mean that's that, that's a that's a pretty big journey and a pretty you know a pretty big manifest destiny going one of these days i'm going to do this yeah, that's crazy yeah that's the thing i mean you know it, it, it's one thing to talk about it it's another thing to do the work and and you know slug it out on the road and make that happen right that that must be even doing red rocks i played red rocks actually with the colorado symphony <laughs> with, with our, yeah with our queen show and i mean just to do those kind of venues or like the greek theater those places are so yeah. iconic you just you have to kind of go how did this happen right <laughs> well you got to go sometimes you know you just got to say to yourself here's here's what i want to do i don't know how i'm going to get there 
but you're laser focused and you look at one venue or you look at one goal and you'd be like, I don't care how much I have to work. And it, and it's not, there's no, there's no asterisks. There's no, there's no uh, 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 predetermined conditions. You know, it's like, it's like, well, I only work during Monday through Friday. It's like, that's not going to help. That's not going to help you. And it's not going to work. You know, it's, it's 24 seven. You have to be laser focused and driven and the artists that are more driven than talented tend to make it out. You know, exactly. Sometimes yeah. very talented people with pre-existing conditions on what they will do and when they will do it don't make it there. But the ones that have less skills like me <laughs> with with well. with a lot of chutzpah, you 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 tend to you tend to be you you tend to get there before you know, or you, you tend to achieve what you want to achieve. Yeah. That's another Rick Rubin topic. Actually, I'm sure you've heard that too, where he talks about that, about people. It's not always about talent. Oftentimes it's about persistence and doing the work. And there's a lot of people that are not, are not willing to do the second part. Well, I know a lot of very, you know, I, I know of and I've, I've run into a lot of very talented people that, that, that you go, I don't understand why this isn't connecting. And then there's always an underlier. And there's yeah, always, you find out yeah. there's there's always some, you know, and, and, and one of the things that derails careers faster than anything is fear of success. And and because there's a there's a there's a some sort of uh, neurological tick somewhere in the brain, it says I'm not worthy of this. Yep. And you have to you have to shake that off because at the end of the day, you are if if, if those opportunities present themselves, you are worthy of it. And, yeah. and just embrace it and, and go along for the ride. You know, don't don't figure out a way to to to, you know, derail the freight train once you got it rolling, because the hardest thing about a freight train is getting it started. It takes the most amount of fuel, most amount of energy and 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 the most amount of work. OK, once you once you got it at 30 miles an hour, it's hard to get it stopped. OK, it's harder to get it stopped. than it is. So so go along for the ride and don't question it and just like. It's like, you know, there's times I'm up there not killing it and be like, oh, my God, I don't even know why anybody's here. You have to take that <laughs> off because yeah. because they paid here. their money. They're there. <laughs> well, something is connecting. It's not yeah. it's not just they paid their money. Something is connecting. And and you have to just embrace that and be like, OK, I am who I am. And the people like this. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing, too. Like you said, I think a lot of people do self-sabotage and that's something in the manif manifestation aspect of things, too, can, can really kind of help you. It's kind of building your own internal self-esteem and staying focused. Um, so getting back to Hollywood Bowl, that's actually going to be out next week, uh, May 17th. Right. Your first Thank single. You <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Your guess is good in mine these days. Okay, huh? that's what I have. <laughs> and uh, yeah, then the, the first single from that album is going to be 24 Hour Blues, which I checked out last night. Sounds amazing. Hey. Um, uh, yeah, you're welcome. And actually, too, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about your Keeping the Blues Alive Foundation, because that's an awesome story. Tell me about how you got involved with that and how you started it. We started it, I think, 15 years ago. And it was just a, a a a vehicle to give back. I mean, we've been very successful and, and very blessed in this music business, in this hideous business of music, as I like to say. <laughs> um, but you know, I you know I grew up in an era. I'm Gen Gen X, um, the last probably generation that literally had a full time music program in schools. You know, and as you see, budgets truncated and you know, uh, you know, kids unable to locate their own home state on a map. Yeah. You know, it, there's, there's, this is a bit there's, sad. There, there, there's some underlying problems there, yeah. especially in the public schools. But there are still a lot of great public schools that that want to teach music, want to want to start a guitar program or have a have instruments that have been grandfathered in that are just in disrepair, you know, guitars with three strings and they they can't get money to replace the strings or saxophone reeds or any of that kind of stuff, or instruments repaired. That's what we do. You know, that's where we come in. And during the during the pandemic, um, uh, we raised over a million dollars for musicians who had the rug ripped out from under them right before the summer. You, you know what I mean? And yep. 
that that to me is something that that is I'm most proud of in my career is the fact that we gave away over a million dollars to to hundreds of musicians of all all shapes and sizes and styles um, to to at least alleviate the financial pressure of not working, you know, and it's not, you know, it's like, you know, unless you have, you know, tons of hundreds of songs and, 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 you know, you know, 50 to a hundred titles in the streaming universe, making money, there's no money there. Okay. Unless you own your own masters, there's no money there. It's good when you own your own masters, okay? Because every time a song is played on Spotify or whatever, it's generating fractional pennies that add up right. across the you know across the fiscal year. But if you don't have that, live is live is your salvation. Well, we were the first to get shut down, the last to come back, and um, you know we were it, 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 we were deemed not essential. Um, <laughs> and so, a lot of people who are banking on the summer festival season and those those runs in the summer for their very fiscal lives found themselves hitting a brick wall and going, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I'm going to work for, for Amazon. Yeah. You know? Try to serve, just try to survive. So you're just surviving. You're selling off your gear you, and, and, and you're taking all these steps backwards. That right. When you were about to take steps forward. And that's what we did it was called fueling musicians. And, and it was really something, again, it's one of the most, the things I'm most proud of in my own career. It's just awesome. a very, 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 uh, um, you know, a successful campaign. And thanks to people like, you know, Gibson and, and Volkswagen Fender, um, uh, you know, our friends at Ernie Ball, uh, Music Man and um, Chicago Music Exchange and, and and all these, you know, Reverb, all these people that came up and, you know, and ponied up and, and uh, all the artists that we have been on our cruise, we did multiple streamathons, raised hundreds of thousands of dollars. They all donated tracks, you know, like they recorded at their house. And we and we ran these hours long yeah. tracks. Awesome. You know, like streamathons raised hundreds of thousands so in, in 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 a short period of time. And we put our own money in too as well. Mm-hmm. And and that and that helped. That actually helped. Like there's not a day goes by. Like if I'm at a festival, somebody will come up to me from a band that you've heard of and be like, you know, whether they're a side player or, or principal. And be like, hey, you know, I signed up for that thing and, and I got $1,500. I'm like, that's what it was for. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, that was, you know, I mean, I live in Vegas and that same thing, like a lot of Vegas musicians, they didn't get help from anybody. So he had he had um, some organizations, you know, Music Cares was one of them also too, that really helped a lot of people out. Um, Music yeah, Cares is a-, a great organization. They, they, they help a lot with, they helped a lot during the pandemic. They also help a lot with 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 musicians that 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 um, are are find themselves uh, struggling, um, you know, in a medical uh, situation. They have a yeah. real good apparatus to 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 help people that are professional musicians that all of a sudden find themselves with a six figure you know hospital bill, and yeah. and they can, they can they can you know truncate that that pressure. Yeah, that's awesome, and they're they're and they work with the Grammys, and it's kind of you know it's, it's just great that people give back because there's people there is money in the music industry but it's nice when when it makes its way to people that are not necessarily making a living but that are on are on the fringes trying to just bang out in clubs and survive right well all you have to realize is that when when you're when you're uh, you're coming home to wherever you live from a festival okay like a big festival of any kind where the music business kind of converges and you find yourself upgraded to business class and you look around, you don't see the musicians, you see the executives. It's time to pony up. Yeah. That's, I mean, that, that's a good observation. <laughs> I, I'm like, I'm like, I'm sitting next to managers and, 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 uh, and executives. And I'm like, yeah. ah, and then I see all the gig bags going past the curtain sitting in 32. <laughs> fucking hands. Okay. Uh, yeah. Pony up, Pony yeah. up. It's 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 That's, not, you know what I mean. It's like without musicians, you know, you're you're going to sell real estate. Yeah, you're going to be managing nothing. Yeah, exactly. And I don't I don't apologize for sitting up front because I earned every fucking dollar. But what I'm saying is, if you just <laughs> with DC. It, it's it's you know that's that's you know i sat in this very position and came up with that fueling musicians thing because of that and i'm like you know what everybody's made a lot of money off this uh off off of music that has put themselves in a position to make a lot of money but you know you can't just sit there and go well i'm sorted out while everybody starves that's yeah. 
that was that was my rationale. Yeah, and that's that's awesome, man. Because it's it's cool that and you're you're setting an example for a lot of folks with that. Um, tell me, tell me, just lastly, um, what's your advice to young musicians? But what would be the the, the kind of the couple of the golden nuggets that you could offer to people? Because you have the business and the playing aspect. Don't switch lanes. If you have a lane that you're passionate about, okay, that you enjoy, that you you are. Every musician knows who they are. Um, there's some that have identity crisis, but generally deep down, they're like, this is this is what gets me going. And it's not a lot of times it's not the, the most hip popular thing on the block right now, you know. Never pivot. Never, never. I should rephrase that. Don't you have to pivot every once in a while, but never lose track who you are. Um, it's and it's not follow your, you know, it, it's it's different than following your passion. It's 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 following yourself, being true to yourself, because if you are true to yourself, then you have no peers. You are that person. And when it connects to an audience, then you own that lane. No, but you're not in anybody else's lane. You're not, you're not traveling in the wake. You're not just a passenger on a, on a, on a vehicle. You are the vehicle. And I, I heard a great quote was um, people who just say successful people who just say blindly to, to others, like, you know, just follow your passion are already rich. Okay. And, <laughs> and it's true. Yeah, I know. I agree with you. <laughs> but if you follow who you are, who you are as a human and as an as a, a true you know you find your true north as an artist then and 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 push your way through it when you break out you have no peers and and you are then then you see people following you and then and my advice to those people following others is you got to try to find your true north um I I'm a blues rock guitar player who plays too many notes. That's what I do. And I don't care. I don't, I don't have, I, I, I don't want to hear internet chatter about like, I don't, you know, his note choices are blah, blah. I'm in the entertainment business, man. I, 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 my whole thing is, is driven by applause and entertainment. Okay. I don't, I, I, I am not here to impress the intellectuals. Okay. Behind keyboards that don't have gigs and that's that's really where i where i stand and it's really true you have to be the true north and you create the trend not follow it that's awesome and that's great all those are really valid awesome points and especially coming from you because you're, you're, you're living it and um thank you so much for joining me joe i know you're a very, very busy guy and i appreciate you making the time to have Anytime. a chat thank you very much and uh, i hope to visit your studio one day well, it's my virtual studio in Las Vegas. You're always welcome. There you uh, go. Yeah, awesome. Hey, man, have have a safe time on the road, and hopefully, I'll, I'll get a chance to see you soon and I'm live because I haven't had that opportunity, and I and I know it's amazing. So I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks for doing this. Awesome. Thank you so much, Joe. Cheers. All right. Bye.